Fortescue Metals manages to achieve consistent revenue growth year over year and they also manage to pay out a 7% dividend which they want to expand on. I'm the Max Invest YouTube channel and I do daily deep dives into your favourite stocks. If you enjoy the video, remember to like and subscribe and remember nothing said in this video is financial advice and you should always do your own research. We are going to start by understanding the business. Now, Fortescue Metals Group is an Australian iron ore producer. It is the fourth largest iron ore producer in the world following BHP, Rio Tinto and Vale. Vale is from Brazil and Brazil controls 21% of the iron ore market while Australia controls well over 50%. Fortescue was founded in 2003 by Andrew Forrest, a visionary CEO who expects big things in the future. FMG has 11,000 employees and a market cap of 72 billion. This means it is one of the biggest companies on the ASX and is a massive, massive stock. It is considered a price taker as it will generally follow the price of iron ore. Also, it costs $12.81 a tonne for Fortescue Metals to get iron ore out of the ground, which is significant as iron ore currently costs around $160 a tonne. Its primary focus going into the future is also to move into being one of the biggest renewable energy producers in the world, which is quite different to what it's doing, but there is a whole plan for FMG to expand into this area at a rapid rate. Fortescue produce green steel, which could generate 40,000 jobs. Green hydrogen creates steel and emits only water vapor, not coal. This means instead of using coal to get the steel, FMG are going to use hydrogen, which will only emit vapor and will be more friendly for the environment. It aims to begin building its first green steel pilot plant in Australia this year. Fortescue Metals have a fantastic supply chain. They are building out a fully integrated end-to-end -end supply chain across Western Australia. It is involved with every step of iron ore supply right through to the export. They are spending more and more on building these massive projects like the Iron Bridge project and other projects in this specific area in Western Australia and they are expected to become more and more profitable as they are expanding their projects which are primarily located in Western Australia. Fortescue Metals have amazing growth and innovation ahead of them. Andrew Forrest has unveiled that they are planning to build more than 235 gigawatts of renewable capacity mostly in wind and solar to become a supplier of green energy and hydrogen that would rival the country's biggest oil suppliers in terms of energy produced. Andrew Forrest has said that he wants net zero emissions by 2040 and he is already well onto his way of doing this, beginning the massive plans right now. They have committed significant amounts to this renewable transition already and they are expected to continue to commit more and more to it. As we can see, Fortescue Metals have invested a significant amount in a solar gas project, Pilbara Energy Connect, and they have also invested a significant amount in hydrogen, which I have also said will help them create green steel. Despite Fortescue Metals' big and costly plans to move ahead with renewable energies into the future, they have amazing financials. As we can see, it costs less than $13 per ton to get the iron ore and they have 4.9 billion US dollars of cash on hand, a significant amount for any business. As we can see, Fortescue Metals have had revenue steadily increasing year over year, from just 5 billion in 2011 to a massive 18.6 billion in 2020. These numbers are also a little bit behind and it is even more so right now. As we can also see, Fortescue have achieved an amazing return on invested capital besides 2015 and 2016. In the past two years, in 
Fortescue have had 25.7% return on invested capital and 36.8%. This means that they are using and managing the money that we give them very well. And I generally think anything over 15% is quite high. We can also see earnings per share is steadily trending upwards and is over $2.23 right now, which is a massive amount for any company and shows how profitable they are. We can also see FMG have massive positive free cash flow, and we can see their PE ratio is pretty low, meaning they could be undervalued. It says six here, however, their share price has now risen from $13.76 to around $24, so their PE ratio is 11. This is still not that high as generally companies have PE ratios over 15 and especially in the current market, everything has PE ratios of 20, 30, 40. Another big thing about Fortescue Metals, which is what many of you came to the video for, is that they have a 7% dividend yield. This dividend yield is one of the biggest in the ASX and they're actually planning to continue expanding this dividend yield if their profits go well. If you have a 7% dividend yield and you just have these constant dividends being reinvested in the company, keep picking up shares, you are almost guaranteed to be profitable into the future, especially with a company that is continuously increasing its revenue and doing well right now. They can afford to pay out this dividend at this current moment. We can also see Fortescue Metals have a debt to equity ratio of 0.77. I have read that it is actually slightly lower than this now. Anything under one is pretty good and it shows they have significantly more equity than they do debt, which is good for things like bankruptcy and it probably means they're not going to go bankrupt. They also have a current ratio of 2.25, showing they have 2.25 times the total current assets as they have total current liabilities, which means they have a ton of cash on hand, a ton of assets, and this is going to be great for the company to expand, continue building their projects going into the future. These two metrics, debt to equity and current ratio, do show Fortescue has basically a flawless balance sheet, and this is also good for them paying out the dividend yield that they pay out. Fortescue have a couple of competitive advantages. One is, of course, their extremely low cost of getting the iron ore at under $13. Another competitive advantage is their massive scale and their fully integrated supply chain, as we already saw in the previous slide, which will help them with short-term supply disruptions, and it should mean the business is more efficient and more effective into the future with their connected end-to-end -end supply chain and the fact that that they produce iron ore right up until export and they're involved in every step of the way and vertically integrated with this. Another big competitive advantage, as we've already talked about, is they are innovative. They're going towards renewable energy and hydrogen to make the planet a better place. They are well ahead of the other iron ore producers into this and the other iron ore producers will need to do this at some stage when government mandates kick in. So to see Fortescue Metals is already doing this at this current moment gives me a lot of faith in the company and it makes me think when mandates are there, they will already be well ahead and they'll be able to capitalise on that. Another big thing for Fortescue Metals is they are already a massive company and they want to do ethical practices in other countries. They will not give other countries their iron ore or all that stuff if they are not operating ethically, which is quite good from the company and should go well for it into the future. Another key component of Fortescue Metals is the management team. It is founded by Andrew Forrest in 2003. Now, he is the visionary chairman with all of the renewable ambitions that is taking this company to the next level and making them one of the biggest renewable supplies in the entire world. Andrew Forrest has $20 billion, and this is primarily due to Fortescue Metals, and he is one of the richest people in Australia because of this. This is also good because Andrew Forrest has a ton of FMG shares. He's not selling them. In fact, Andrew Forrest is buying more shares the entire time, despite having such a big amount of his money locked up in Fortescue. Inside has bought $243 million of Fortescue shares last year, 
and there was basically no insider selling for Fortescue medals. Andrew is a member of the UN Environmental Program and really cares about this and wants to ensure other businesses operate ethically that FMG are working with. He and his team have visited 23 countries and they are trying to secure renewable energy assets within these countries. This is great for the company. Fortescue also want to pass some of the biggest global energy providers like Chevron and Total. And Andrew Forrest has big ambitions for the business, heaps of money locked up in it, and he's been the CEO of this successful company for 17 years, which is great. We need to take a look at some of Fortescue Metals' risks. One big risk is they're doing a massive renewables transition, and if this transition does not work and reduces the company's profitability, their share price will go down and we will not make money despite the big dividend yield. Another big risk is that the price has ran up a lot recently for Fortescue Metals and it is starting to trade quite high. Of course, Fortescue Metals is a price taker, which means they need to take the price of iron ore. The price of iron ore has rallied significantly this year and it is up to the levels that it was at around 2008. Of course, if the price of iron ore drops, people will simply sell their FMG shares and the price will go down. This is unfortunate as the price of iron ore is so high right now and it is a big risk for the company going into the future. Let's take a look at what fair value would be for Fortescue Metals. Now, Fortescue Metals does only have a PE ratio of 11, which is very low. However, it has ran up a lot in price it is a price taker of iron ore and there has been some recent drama over people resigning in Fortescue Metals, failures in projects and short seller reports, all of which are probably going to push the price down in the short term. However, there are more infrastructure investment that is likely to happen in 2021 as flagged by Joe Biden. There is tons of iron ore demand from China right now and Brazil has been negatively impacted by the pandemic. I do expect this to go on throughout 2021 and I do expect iron ore will still do quite well throughout 2021. It's difficult to say what price to pay for this company and I'm honestly not sure where it will go in the short term. I have bought some shares recently but I did buy it before all of the drama came out so I probably wouldn't be buying into the prices right now if I knew that that drama was going to come out in the past couple of days. However, this is not financial advice and you do need to make your own investment decisions. Anyway, that brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, remember to like and subscribe. It means a lot to the channel.